Good afternoon, everyone. It is Friday, March the 20th, 2020. It is currently 2.45 p.m. Central Time. Well, you have probably heard the phrase, if at first you don't succeed... Yes, I can hear you say it. Try, try again. Well, I'm trying, trying, trying. Wait, is this, is this attempt number three? Attempt number four? I don't know. I'm trying again because I haven't succeeded very well so far this afternoon. And what is so, I, 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 what is so funny about this situation is I was doing a live broadcast and somewhere during the live broadcast, everything froze. And so that entire live broadcast was deleted. It, it did not work. Even though I, I, I taught for 50 minutes, 50 minutes of teaching, poof, gone. Now, you know what I did after those 50 minutes were gone and I realized it was gone and I had to go to YouTube and go here and go here and go here to delete all of the, the messages that were just basically 50 minutes of silence. I got frustrated. I got irritated. I dare say I was a little bit angry. And what makes that so funny, it's not really funny, but funny in kind of a, in an illustrative way, funny maybe for you, not funny for me. Um, what I realized is I was getting irritated and upset that I was literally violating. I was literally going against what I had just preached and taught for 50 minutes. I literally was going against everything I just did by getting upset and getting irritated. Now, you you don't know why I was going against what I said because you don't know what I said because, well, now I've got to teach it again. But here I am, and maybe this time, maybe this time, I will listen to myself a little bit more. Maybe I will listen to myself. See, it's easy to teach. (laughs) It's not so easy to do. All right. It is easy. And when I say easy to teach, obviously there's great difficulty in teaching. I'm not, I'm not minimizing it because I teach, I preach. It's difficult. Had to sneeze. See, I'm, I'm, I'm about, I'm, I'm, I'm almost going to mess up this live broadcast. Hopefully I got that, uh, the, the, uh, button muted there. I hope I did. So I apologize if I sneezed live on the air. I hope I, I hope I didn't. But no, what I was trying to say is it's easy just to tell people this is what you should do. It's far different than to tell people what they should do, how we should act, and then do it yourself. There's always that difficulty. And of course, as Christians, we all know that we're all going to fall short. We're always going to sin. And that's why Jesus had to come and die for us. So, but it was just, it was very illustrative to me how, how quickly I forgot what I had just taught and forgot what I just preached. But hopefully, 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 uh, I will learn the lesson a little bit better and hopefully you will learn the lesson as well. All right, let's start this way. You know, I know that right now we are living in the midst of a global pandemic coronavirus, COVID-19. And this pandemic is turning the world upside down. There are states where people are being told to shelter in place, not to leave their house. Businesses are being closed down, completely turning our world upside down. And churches around the United States of America and around the world are having to cancel their services, try to move their services to some kind of live stream. Maybe they're going to only live stream once on Sunday. Maybe they will live stream Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night. I don't know. It seems that for many, they're going to reduce the amount of teaching they're giving. So it's, it's, and pastors are scrambling, trying to figure it out, how it's going to work. But I believe, and I continue to say this, that yes, the coronavirus, the COVID-19 global pandemic is a serious thing. I think today the death toll is now over 10,000 people have died. The virus continues to spread. It's a serious situation. Everyone needs to be well informed. We don't need panic. We need to be rational. We need to be thoughtful. We need to be informed. We need to take necessary precautions. We need to know what the rules are being handed down to us by our by. Federal, federal government, local government. We need to do everything we can to not only look out for ourselves, but look out for our fellow man. We need to try to abide by the laws as best as, I, best as we can in order to help protect and preserve the life and lives of others, to help their lives not to be you know, uh, negatively influenced by being infected because we're not taking the precautions we're supposed to take. So our lives are, 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 are going to be turned upside down for uh, who knows how long. 
All right, we don't know. There's lots of, of speculation, but we could be having, you know, churches could be empty and having the live stream teaching for who knows an indefinite period of time. Education has been stopped. Um, it's a it's a crazy time to be alive and to witness all of this. But I believe that in the midst of all of this bad, in the midst of the death, in the midst of the sickness, in the midst of the economic suffering, and in, in the midst of the physical suffering, in the midst of all of the bad, I believe there is an opportunity. I believe there is an opportunity for some great spiritual good. I truly believe that. I believe that in the midst of this, something good could come from it spiritually because we are being made basically because of these circumstances to stop what we're doing, to stop going here, stop going there, to stop to be still. And we can take this time of stillness. We can take this time of of stopping all of this activity and hopefully as a result from this stillness, from being forced to stop, that we can be still and know God, that we can grow into, grow our knowledge of God, that our knowledge of God can move maybe just from an academic sense to an intimate, deep knowledge of God, a great appreciation for God, that we can grow spiritually, that there can be a spiritual transformation that will take place in the lives of believers. Hopefully, the church would look will be different than it was before the coronavirus started. That's my hope that there is a there is something standing here. There, there's there's a there's a chance for spiritual good that's just right there in front of us. You look around, stop what you're doing. Don't go here, don't go there. Stop, be still, isolate. Well, we could use that as an opportunity to meditate on the things of God, to grow in our knowledge of God, to study, to to pray. To, to fast, to, 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 you know, dig into the scriptures, to learn theology. There's, there's all of this opportunity waiting at us. Now, it does, it's going to require Christians taking that opportunity because we can decide to take the stillness and fill it with busyness. Um, we can, we can take that stillness and fill it with all kinds of noise. And we can spend that time, you know, fighting about, we can spend all of that time on, you know, social media, arguing about this, talking about this, worried about this, worried about that. We can spend all of this time watching Netflix and streaming Disney Plus and hours and hours and hours of entertainment. We can sit there and, and spend all the time arguing and getting upset with each other and the family because we're all, you're all closed in together for a long period of time and the kids aren't going to school. And it could turn into a time of bickering and fighting and arguing. It could, it could be, it could be, there's lots of negatives that can come from it. You could just stop thinking about God. You're not even, you're not even listening to your church's live stream. You've just tuned out of, of the things of God and you're just preoccupied with self and preoccupied with the world. That would be negative. Or you can find a way to grab hold of a possible spiritual opportunity that we could be renewed, that a transformation could occur, that we could be changed because we are forced to stop, to be still, and hopefully to know God. And when I say know God, know him in an intimate way. That is my hope. That is my prayer. And that is what we're going to try to accomplish. All right? And I want to set this up by reading a passage in 1 Peter, all right? 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. All right, so we're getting ready to be told what blessings, what things that we have, we we are blessed with that we have received because of what Jesus Christ has done. Uh, we have been, uh, we have been. Listen, um, we have been begotten again, begotten us again, born in a sense, born again unto a lively hope. We have a, li- a living hope, right, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. We have an incorruptible, um, an undefiled inheritance waiting in heaven for us. That's awesome. That is great. We have a lively hope. We have an inheritance. Who are kept? We are kept by the power of God. I got to turn the page. Through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. 
We are kept by the power of God. We have assurance. We are, we are, we, we can know that my, my, my salvation is dependent upon God. I am kept by his power. I have a lively hope. I have an inheritance that is undefiled, incorruptible. These are all the wonderful things that we have. And we should rejoice and we should be glad and we should be thankful and we should praise God and thank God for all the things that he has blessed us with and all the things that we have. But some of those things are pointing to what we will have in the future in heaven. Some of those things refer to something now, but that lively hope is even looking towards something but, but it's assurance of what we are going to have and that we know that we are kept by the power of God so we will get there. But in contrast to maybe what we're looking to, what we have assurance of that will happen, we need to focus on the right now. And Peter is writing to some people who are going through some very difficult times, persecution, their lives were at risk. But look what he says here, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness though through manifold temptations. Now you may great you may be greatly rejoicing, however, now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. There's a season that they're going to go through where their life will be filled with manifold temptations, trials, and difficulties. Now, for them, this is physical suffering, physical persecution, death, the threat of death, things happening to them. Well, right now, we yes, we have this lively hope. Yes, we can rejoice in all the things God has promised for us and is going to do for us and what he is currently doing in us. We are grateful for, for all of that, but for a season, we may be experiencing some manifold trials and difficulties as a planet is in the midst of a global pandemic and there's death, there's suffering, economic upheaval, just as well as just as much as your daily routine being blown completely up and your whole life and your, your daily routine being dramatically changed. That may not be the exact same kind of difficulty, but it's still a trial. It's still difficulty. But look what he says here. Verse 7. So we go through this heaviness, these manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, Right now, I want you to just realize this: your faith, your there, they, there is a spiritual thing that is more precious than than ever than than anything else on this. This there's a the spiritual aspect is more important and more precious than the physical and material. Now, that doesn't mean the physical and material is not important, and that doesn't mean we ignore people's physical needs or material needs. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the he's trying to give us a different way of looking at it. It's like if I suffer physically, if I suffer all of these manifold temptations and go through a season of sorrow, that that we should see that as being a positive thing if it has a positive impact on us spiritually. See, we are willing to endure physical difficulty and suffering if the end result is spiritual benefit. Because we understand the spiritual is of greater and of, of greater value than the physical because the physical will perish. He compares it to gold. Gold may be greatly precious. Gold may be of great value, but it will perish. Economic stability is a great thing. Not having a virus killing over 10,000 people and turning the world upside down is a very good thing and we would want peace and no viruses and and people to be prosperous. Yes, there's all good in that. However, the spiritual is of greater value. And if the, the trial of your faith, if the testing, if the negative thing produces a spiritual good, then we see the value in that. It's a radical different approach to life. Seeing the value of the spiritual, we, we, we are we so preoccupied with the external. We are so preoccupied with comfort. We're so preoccupied with, with all the things that make us feel good. But we, we have to see things. No, the, the spiritual part is of greater value. 
And we need to see that more than anything else. Whatever difficulty I, fa- I, face, I, I face is worth it if it leads to something. Now, no, note how this verse is constructed. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold. See, your, the, your faith is more precious than that of gold, which perisheth, it, perisheth. Though it be tried with fire, though it be tried with fire, though your faith be tried with fire, might be found unto praise, honor, and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. If the trying of your faith produces a situation where God will be praised, God will be honored, and God will be glorified, right? Well, where there will be praise, honor, and glory. Uh, if the spiritual, if there's something, if there's something that occurs to your spiritual benefit where there is praise, glory, and honor because of the spiritual condition, then we should desire that. We should desire that which brings praise, glory, and honor more than we want than it brings peace and comfort in this life. Now, I'm not saying we can't want peace and comfort in this life, but what we do is we see that if 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 everything is going wrong and there's trial and there's pain and there's tragedy and there's difficulty, hey, if this brings praise, glory, and honor at the appearing of Jesus Christ, that I'm all for it, that I should want that. Now, here's the thing. We should see this as a time that possibly something spiritually good could do, could could come from this, but we're going to have to take the responsibility upon ourselves because we can, we can spend all of the time filling our minds with everything of this world, filling, every, as I was talking about the stillness, filling the stillness with busyness, we can do all of that or we can say, no, this is a time to grab onto this so that I can spiritually benefit from this so that the trying of my faith will produce something that will bring praise, glory, and honor at the appearing of Jesus Christ. We want that it will bring praise, honor, and glory to God, that it will bring, in a sense, a praise and honor to the condition of us spiritually, that there's something praiseworthy to our spiritual condition of what because of what God has done through us through that testing, through that trial. So what I'm going to do is try to use this opportunity. I'm going to take a drink right now because I'm losing my voice. I'm going to try to take... <clears throat> take another drink. I'm going to try to take this opportunity that while we may have to stop doing what we typically do and we may have to, our routines may turn be turned completely up, upside down, that we take this opportunity and I'm going to use it to try to provide you, listen to me, a daily dose of catechesis. You may not know what catechesis is. Your church may not ever use that term. You know, may not be familiar with it. Catechesis is religious instruction. Catechesis is religious instruction. Typically, it's uh, typically the term is used this way. If I can stop hitting the microphone, it's used typically used this way. A catechesis is religious instruction utilizing a catechism. Catechism is, is a way the early church definitely instructed people the way it discipled people. Catechism is, is a, basically think of it as a question and answer form of religious instruction. Here's a question. Here's the answer. Here's the question. Here's the answer. And then have some scriptural proofs. That's typically how they are structured. Catechisms have been used by Christians throughout church history. There's been some form of, of catechesis, some kind of religious instruction done in kind of a catechism type way, maybe even before one was published. Uh, you can go back to the early creeds and they were almost used as a catechism uh, type instruction as well. They were used for that kind of purpose, developing kind of a question and answer form. So what I'm going to do is daily, I'm going to turn on this microphone and I'm going to do some religious instruction utilizing the catechisms, utilizing confessions of faith, utilizing the creeds, and maybe some systematic theologies. All right. Now, this will differ from the other live broadcast I do where it's more Bible study oriented. Uh, this will be, you know, c- catechesis. It's, it's gonna, I'm going to catechize you through uh, religious instruction using catechisms, creeds, and confessions of faith and systematic theologies. A little daily dose of catechesis. All right. A little daily dose of religious instruction. I, I'm going to try to do this during this entire global pandemic. 
Who knows how long it's going to last? It may be far shorter than we anticipate, could be far longer than we anticipate. Right now, we're facing the unknown. And when we face the unknown, let's fill the unknown. Listen, let's fill the unknown with what we do know, right? Right now, we're facing the unknown. You know what you do in the, in the face of the unknown? You focus on what we do know. And what we do know is that there is a God. He has given us his word. And we have the historic Christian faith that has been around for 2,000 years that we can dig in to the catechisms and the creeds and the confessions that give us that solid theological foundation and truth of what we do know. We need to cling to what we do know in the midst of the unknown. We need a foundation. We need a rock. And a little daily dose of catechesis, I think, will be beneficial. And I think all churches should be catechizing and doing this. I think we should be filling our time with the teaching of God's word if we want any spiritual benefit from it. All right. So are you ready for a little catechesis today? Are you ready? I hope so. I feel like I feel like this entire broadcast has, has gone so I, I really do. I feel like it's gone. This one has even gone wrong. I, I, I almost stopped. Uh, I almost stopped a few minutes ago and just said, ah, ah, I'm done. But but you'll see that there's a lesson in this. There is a lesson in this. Are you ready? All right. We're going to go. We're going to start with one of the most famous question and answers and, and catechism history, all right? Uh, most, most people who've ever read catechisms or know catechisms, they know this. Uh, the children in this church, they have been taught this. Um, they know it. They used to memorize it. All the members, all the adults of the church know it. Uh, this is, I mean, this is so well known. And, and this, and I think it's perfect. This is perfect for a time of a global pandemic. It really is perfect. And and I'll show you why I, in fact, I was about to, I was really violating it just a second ago. You'll, you'll see why. But here it is. Question. Let's start with the question. All right. What is the chief end of man? What is the chief end of man? Uh, in the uh, catechism that I'm holding in front of me, they state it this way. What is the chief and highest end end of man. What is the chief and highest end of man? During the midst of a global pandemic, we, our life is turned upside down, right? You're used to going to work and you, and whether you like it or not, sometimes you kind of see that job as your chief end. And when we say chief end, what is your purpose in life? What is your chief, what is the chief end of man? What is the chief and highest end of man? What is the, the what is this, this highest end? Uh, the chief and highest end of man is the catechism I have in front of me states. When, when your life is turned upside down, these things that you did, you, you may kind of, you may not realize it, but you may have kind of been viewing them kind of as your chief end, as your main purpose. You, sometimes we are very bad at, 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 we forget what our true chief end, what our true purpose is, and we start Making our family our purpose, our job our purpose, retirement our purpose. We, we make all of these other things our chief end, our purpose, our, our goal, what we're striving for, what we're living for. But when the world is turned upside down, what we need to realize is we need to realize what our true chief end is and realize that tr- chief end and that purpose is still in effect in the middle of a global pandemic. It's still in effect. And what is that chief end? What is our chief purpose? What is our highest purpose? Well, the answer, very famous answer, is this. So what is the chief end of man? Man's chief and highest end is to glorify God and fully to enjoy him forever. So what is the chief end of man? Two parts. Glorify God and enjoy him forever. To glorify God and to enjoy him forever. One question, two answers. What is the chief end of man? Number one, glorify God. Number two, enjoy him forever. It's all put together as one answer, but I like to break it down into two parts. What is your chief purpose in life? The highest purpose you have in your life. What is to be your true purpose if you are a Christian? To glorify God and enjoy him forever. Let's focus on the glorify God part. Go to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. 
Romans chapter 11, let's start in verse 33. Romans chapter 11, verse 33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord or who hath been his counselor? And or who hath first given to him and it shall be recompensed unto him again. Now, we can look at those verses and, and try to, you know, look at those questions and what the implied answer is, but look at verse 36, speaking of God. For of him and through him and to him, of him, through him, and to him are all things. What is the chief end of man? To glorify God. Well, why is my chief end? Why is my highest purpose to glorify God? Here's very important. Because all things are of him and through him. The first reason, this is very important. The first reason that you should glorify God, that is your chief end of man, is because he is the creator. Everything finds its origin in God. If he is the creator, your purpose can only be found in the creator. That's why in the world, the world says, no God. The world says, there is no creator. Everything just happened here by chance. Time plus chance, boom, a big boom, and here we are, you know, a big bang, and next thing you know, here we are. If there is no creator, then what is the chief end of man? Well, man determines the chief end of man because they will feel that they are the chief end of all things, that all things are for them, that all all, all things are, are by chance, but for them. They are the apex of everything. So they begin to live a life that is absorbed by self, self-absorbed, self Focus. They begin to believe the universe revolves and orbits around them. They become filled with selfishness. And guess what? All they care about is what happens to them. And anything that irritates them, they get mad because their, their life is about them. Listen, when you remove God, then, then everything is about you, how you feel what irritates you, what bothers you. But for the Christian, no, 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 no. We believe in a creator. We believe in a creator. So he establishes what the purpose is because we didn't create it. He created it. And so therefore the creation can only find its purpose in the creator. If there is no creator, then there is, what what is the ultimate purpose? It's you. It's whatever purpose you decree. But if you're not the creator and there is a God, then guess what? He determines the purpose. In fact, just by logical default, we have, if we tra- if we try to find what is the purpose of life, we have to go back to the creator and only in him can we find the purpose because everything, as it says in Romans chapter 11, I want to make sure I quote it correctly. For of him, everything is of him through him. He is, the, he is the reason for everything. He is the cause of everything. But note this. So the first reason we should glorify God is because he is the creator. You can only find your purpose in the creator and to him. Everything is created by him and everything is created for him. The reason you are to glorify God, the reason your chief end is to glorify God is because you are created for God. You are created for God. Let me say this carefully. Now, I know this is not, uh, the way I'm going to say this is not, a uh, it could be misunderstood. So listen to what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to make a point here. I'm trying to use an illustration here. Think of it this way. You were created for God. God wasn't created for you. Now, obviously God is eternal. He wasn't created. I understand that, but I'm using that in a figurative way, right? You were created by God. God wasn't created for you because sometimes we treat we treat this idea that here I am. Oh, I'm glad there's a God out there because he's there for me. He's there to do what I want. No, no, no. You are there for God. You are created for him. You're created to glorify him. God is not there. God doesn't orbit around you. You are to orbit around him. He is the center. He is the purpose. He is 
the, 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 the thing that you should be focused on. He is the thing you should be seeking to glorify. He should be the one you're seeking, uh, you, you are seeking to please. But we make, we place ourselves in the middle of this. Listen, this is very important. Inside of us is a voice that never stops speaking. It speaks 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you know what? It screams day in and day out. You're, it, the voice says this in you. The voice says it in me. You know what it just says? It says it, says it over and over and over. I, 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 me, 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 I, I, me, me, mine, mine. It, all it is preoccupied is with itself. And we live our life that way, right? As soon as something doesn't go right for us, we get irritated because it didn't go our way. We don't like how it made me feel. All we are preoccupied with how life works. And as soon as it doesn't go our way, what do we do? We complain. We get angry. We lash out. We get mad. We do this at work. We do this in our family. We do this in church. I've said it so many times. You take church members and they constantly are worried about what they want. All they care about is the church operates their way. And if it doesn't go their way, they hit the highway. And they don't care that they, they don't care if you make a change to please them, that it could, it could be, it, it could not please someone else. They don't care about that. It's me, 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 I, 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 self, 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 self. It's this voice that just keeps screaming this I, 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 I. Just focus on I. Just focus on me. Just focus on myself. Me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. It just keeps saying it. it. I think it's just really one word. I, 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 I is all it says. But you could use the phrase me, myself, and I. That's what that inside voice just keeps screaming at you. And that's how you react. Think about it. What is your chief end of man? To glorify God. Why? Well, the first reason is to glorify God. Listen. It's because he's the creator and you can only find your purpose in God. The second reason you should glorify God is because everything is made for him. You were made for God. Now, I want you to think about this. Here's what happens. Right now, in the middle of a global pandemic, you're isolated. Maybe you're all put together as a family in a house, right? Kids can't go to school. And there's going to be lots of things that's going to irritate everyone, right? And as soon as your wife gives you that wrong look or the wrong tone of voice, or she says something you don't like, you react how it made you feel. So you, re- you, you respond. Rarely do we stop and go, wait a minute. My wife just irritated me. How can I glorify God in this situation? No, 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 no. We, we react. We get mad. We get mad because it didn't go the way we wanted it to go. Our kids do something. We get mad. We react negatively to the kids. We don't stop and go, wait a minute. How can I glorify God in this situation? We don't think that way. We don't. I'm going to take a drink of water. We don't think that way. And the reason we don't think that way is think about it. The scriptures, in a sense, just whisper to us, glorify God, glorify God. And they say the reason I say they whisper to us is because unless we're reading them, unless we're meditating on these verses that tell us to glorify God, that reminds us that everything is created by, everything comes from him, through him, to him, everything is by him, for him. Unless we constantly remind ourselves of that, we've got this internal voice that's screaming at us. See, the, the scriptures, in a sense, whisper, God is creator. All things are by him. All things are for him, right? But we have the internal voice screaming, you, you, focus on you. Focus on yourself. I, 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 I. Oh, 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 look how that, that's irritating me. And so what happens during time of a global pandemic? We spend time online ir- being irritated. This whole thing is dumb. And, we, and we're, just, we're just expressing our frustration and our irritation and saying, how can I glorify God in this? Because we forget our chief end. What is your chief end? To glorify God, to glorify God, to glorify him, to glorify him, to glorify him. This is a very important point in the midst of a global pandemic. We have to have the mentality that how can I glorify God? Listen, 
I want you, I want you to hear me again. There's going to be 9,000 things that are going to be nothing but frustration, irritating. It could, th- there could be things that could make you absolutely scared right now. Your job could be in danger. Finances could be in danger. And you have every right to be concerned about those things. And you've got to do everything you can to take the precautions you can to prepare your family and to do whatever's necessary. I understand that. But while all of that is going on, as a Christian, you need to be asked, how can I glorify God in this? How can I glorify God in this? Oh, this situation is irritating to me. Wait, I have to, I don't, I can't get the food I want. I can't get this. I don't have this. How can I glorify God? Because that's your purpose. Your purpose to glorify God doesn't stop in the middle of a global pandemic. I have to do the same thing. As a pastor, I've got to come up here Sunday and and I'm already dreading it. I got to come up here for an hour during Sunday school to an empty building and teach. I got to then stick around and preach for another hour for Sunday morning. And then I've got to be back back in Sunday evening to the same empty building to preach again. And you know what? It's going to be weird. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be frustrating. In fact, it's going to feel pretty depressing by the time I leave here Sunday night. But you know what? How can I glorify God in the midst of this? All right, we're not going to be able to have church services. How can I glorify God in the midst of this? There's going to be things that bother me and things that irritate me. How can I glorify God in the midst of this? Now, I'm just like you. I get irritated and I get mad. And when things happen to me, my first thought, I'm just going to be honest with you, is not how can I glorify God? Because guess what happened? I told you at the beginning, when when I spent an hour teaching and then I realized that the whole program was gone, whole program was gone. And I just basically sat here for 50 minutes talking in the air. And I didn't, and I trust me, I did not want to do this again. I did not, I was irritated. I was mad because it, it wasted my time. It made me mad. I didn't like the way it made me feel. It irritated me. I didn't want to do it again. Hear the words, me, I, I, I. It affected me. It affected me. I didn't go, oh, stop, 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 stop. How could I glorify God in this? How could I? No, 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 no. All I was, all I was was irritated. And then when I started, when I started and then I had to sneeze and then I kind of stumbled over some words. And then there was a part of me going, I I don't like this. And I was getting irritated. I, I, I was getting ready to hit the stop button, delete it and just say, forget it. Forget it. I'm just going home. That, yeah, I, I was really spiritual. In the inside, I was getting, yeah, I was, I'm, I'm not even happy with this right now. I'm not happy with the way this has gone. But you know what? See, that's me. How can I glorify God in this? I need to finish this. I need to post it for God's glory, God's honor. It's not about me. It's not about people thinking Trevor is a great speaker. It's not about people thinking Trevor is awesome. If I make it about me, I miss the whole point. My purpose is to glorify God. It's hard to think that way. Because when it when we're when something goes against us, we we want to react and not in a way to glorify God. Yesterday, something happened where someone attacked me um, because I was trying to provide a, um, a, a a correct interpretation of something, and and they didn't like it. Next thing, they attacked me. Um, it made me mad. But it, so why did it make me mad? It made me mad because it went after me. It was see me, me, me. I didn't say how can I glorify God in this. Now, I did try to glorify God in it, and I did remind myself of that a number of times. I did think about it. Now, sometimes I would bring, uh, remember this, and sometimes I didn't. And I think I, I think I did pretty good. And I've stopped myself from doing something I wanted to do today because I wanted to come here and turn on the mic and just go on a full-blown rant. But I'm, I'm trying not to do that. So I'm trying to glorify God. It's a struggle. What is my purpose to glorify God? What is my purpose to glorify God? Why, do, why should I seek to glorify God? Let me make it very clear. Why? Because he is creator. Number two, because he, everything is, all of creation is for him, including you. God is not for you. You are for God. You are to glorify God. You are to serve him. In the midst of this global pandemic, look at every situation as an opportunity to glorify God and say, how can I glorify God in the midst of this? How can I glorify God in the midst of this? And that's not your first reaction. Oh, my kids are getting on my nerves. They've been here. They're getting tired. They're getting irritated uh, from being inside. They're fighting with each other. How can I glorify God in the midst of this? How can I glorify? Oh, me and my wife are starting to argue. We're starting to fight. She's got an added. Oh, how can I glorify God in the midst of this? 
oh man, I don't know what I'm going to do about my job. Uh, I don't know when I'm going back to work. I don't know what I'm going to do about money. Oh, how can I glorify God in the midst of this? Oh, I think this whole uh, global pandemic is just mass hysteria. I think it's, I can sit here and get irritated. How can I glorify God in the midst of this? How can I glorify God in the midst of this? Because what is the chief end of man? To glorify God. Now, one other passage about glorifying God, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Yeah, there was a time of little confession there, right? Like there's confession time, right? Hey, we, if we're going to use this for spiritual good, we need to also examine ourselves. And I examined myself and trust me, I didn't see what I like because I got mad. I got mad when this didn't, I, I, I'm, I don't even like this one. I'm mad now, okay? But I, it's got to be about God's glory. It's not about me, all right? First Corinthians chapter 10. This takes the concept and uh, places it a little further. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. What verse do we want to look at? Look at verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Whether what, if I can read right, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Whether therefore you eat or drink, whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. You're eating, you're drinking. The small, the reason it picks, it, 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 I think the reason eating and drinking is chosen there is because that's something we do without even, without much thought. You eat, you drink. You don't really think about it. It's just something you do. And sometimes you eat and drink more for your own pleasure and more for your own survival than you do about thinking about Glorifying God. How can I glorify God? Am I eating? Am I drinking? Why, why am I eating and drinking? I'm not eating for my pleasure. I'm eating and drinking in order to have strength so that I can serve and glorify God. Eating and drinking. How can I glorify God eating and drinking? To remember that, that God gives me uh, the daily bread, that this, that this food comes ultimately from God. He is the provider. Must thank him for food. Glorify God. Glorify God. That is the chief end of man. That is your highest purpose. That is the reason you exist is to bring him glory, glory, honor, and praise. And if the trying of my faith produces something that brings glory, honor, and praise to God, then guess what? I need to be, I I need to welcome it. Very important. There's one more here. How, How long have we gone? 41 minutes. So I'm not going to be able to get into this next one as long as I want, um, but we'll, we'll get into it. So, the, so we'll, we'll, we'll at least do what we can here, all right? Well, I mean, that's the whole idea. The, this is just an informal time of catechesis, right? We're just, we're looking at to, to some of these questions and we're thinking about them. We're talking about them. We're, we're not trying to, to do a college course here. We're just trying to, to, we've got this time to meditate on this. So let's just think about it, all right? So this, this is your assignment. I gave you two passages talking about glorifying God. Come up with five more. Five passages that you think refer to this idea of glorifying God. Right? It may not specifically say it's the, your chief end, it's the chief end of man or you know, it's your chief purpose, but verses that speak about glorifying God, about you glorifying God, about us glorifying God. Find five verses. That's for you to do, your assignment. Right? Now, the next part of this, so what is the chief end of man? Number one, to glorify God. Number two, to enjoy him forever. Now, what does that mean, to enjoy him forever? Well, if we look up the word enjoy, I'm leaning away from the mic to pick up a, my iPad. If we look up the word enjoy, yes, the first thing that shows up in the dictionary, enjoy, take delight or pleasure in. Take delight or pleasure in. Now, right now, during this time of a global pandemic, you're going to have lots of things to worry about, lots of things to be concerned with, maybe lots of things you're, 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 you have anxiety over. But you also will find a, a, the opportunity to find, you're going to, you may start filling your time with lots of things you take pleasure in and you delight in, right? It may be Netflix, Disney Plus, Hulu, I don't know what. It could be, it could be games. I don't know what you're going to do. You could just fill hours and hours and hours and hours with things that pleases you. But for the Christian, we are to glorify God. But listen, we are to take pleasure and delight in God. Do you find delight and pleasure in God? 
Do you take delight in, 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 in pleasure in prayer? Do you take delight and pleasure in the study of God's word, the memorizing of scripture, meditating on God's word day and night, prayer and fasting? Do you? Do you truly take pleasure in that? Um, the, the passage of scripture, the passage of scripture, the catechism I have in front of me offers Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Psalm 73, we can start here in verse 25. Uh, Psalm 73, verse 25. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth upon earth that I desire beside thee. Read that again. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Is there anything on earth you desire? Well, I think we would say there are lots of things on earth I desire besides God. And the psalmist says, there's nothing on earth I desire besides thee, Lord. God is his greatest desire. God is his greatest desire. The implication is, the, the, the catechism is using, he desires God above everything else because he takes great joy. He enjoys God. He takes great pleasure and delight in God. I believe a lot of Christians don't take any real pleasure and delight in God. They like the fact that God offers salvation. They like the idea of heaven. They like the idea of joy God may give them, right? In an order of like benefits, heaven, forgiveness of sins, blessings. I can believe God is in charge. All of these blessings bring us joy, but God is to be the thing that we enjoy in. God himself is the thing we should take pleasure in. God himself is the thing we should take delight in. Now, when everything's being taken away from you, you can't go to the movie theater, can't go to your favorite restaurant. In some states, you're, you know, you're basically, you know, got a shelter in place and you can't go anywhere. Guess what? You'll find out what you truly joy, you'll uh, truly enjoy. You'll find out what you truly take delight in. And if it's not God, then you're missing your whole purpose in life which is to glorify him and to enjoy him forever. Now, there's a second meaning to the word enjoy in the dictionary that I'm not going to get into for this because I'll just leave it right there. So let's review this way first. Question, what is the chief end of man? Answer, everyone should say it with me, to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Now, if I was writing out uh, uh, my own study version of the catechism, I would ask another question. How do, um, why is my chief end to glorify God? Why is my chief end to glorify God? Why is my chief end, why is my chief purpose in life to glorify God? Okay, answer, number one, because God is the creator. All things were made by him. Number two, all things were made for him. All right. So you, you can write it out that way if you want. If you want to write your own, cat, I'll, I'll create my own catechism. What is the chief end of man to glorify God? And how do I know? Why do I know that that's my chief, man, chief end? That's my highest purpose? Because he is the creator of all things. And my, my purpose can only be found in the creator. And number two, all things were made for him. I was literally created for him. So therefore, I need to live a life that seeks to glorify him. It's about God. It's not about me. So no matter what is happening around me, no matter how much we always react and how something impacts us, but we should be focused on how I can glorify God, not on what I can do to make my life better. Number two, what's the second second part of your purpose in life? Number one is to glorify God. Number two is to enjoy him forever. We need to learn to delight in him. He is the source of our joy. He is what we take pleasure in. He is what we take delight in. Have you ever truly experienced taking delight and pleasure in God? If you don't find any pleasure and delight in God, there's something spiritually wrong with you. And you're like, but but everything in the world is so much better. That's that's how you may feel. Guess what? I love music. I absolutely do. I love movies. I absolutely do. I love books. I absolutely do. And there's so many things in this world I can take great pleasure in. Oh, yes, I can. 
But you know what I ultimately know? Never lasts, never ultimately fulfills. It's all going to burn up. God is eternal. Take delight in God. And if we're going to dwell with him forever, we better start taking delight in him or that's going to be a long eternity without any delight because God is going to be the only thing that matters in eternity. All right? I know we like to turn eternity into, I'm going to see grandma, but ultimately we need, what really matters is we're going to see Jesus. We're going to see our creator. We're going to worship and praise him forever. For some people, just the idea of worshiping and praising him forever sounds more like a punishment than a, than a good thing. Well, that's because you don't take any delight and pleasure in him now. What is the chief end of man? To glorify God and enjoy him forever. All right, your assignment, find five verses that speak of glorifying God and find five verses that speak of enjoying God, taking pleasure in God, delighting in God. Right now, I may not. Specific, you've got to be creative and find verses that you think are applicable to this. They're not going to always come right out and say, "Hey, this is the answer to that uh, catechism question." Think of, of of passages that speak of pleasure and joy and delight as it relates to God or, or maybe His Word. You can probably come up with some verses like that: five for glory, five for enjoying Him. All right, I will stop there. I believe this live broadcast has worked. This did not go the way I, for being the first one in this series, this daily catechesis, it was supposed to be far more professional and come across far better than it did. Um, but it all, the first one fell apart the, and the second one also fell apart. I had to stop the second one. Um, this is, I think, the third or fourth attempt. And even this one went wrong. But you know what? What am I worried about? Am I worried about me? Hopefully, I'm worried that God won't be glorified. Now, hopefully, what I have produced will glorify God. If it hasn't, then yeah, I'm embarrassed and I wish I wouldn't have have hit, you know, I I probably should delete it. But we will see. Hopefully, uh, someone will benefit from this little daily catechesis on Friday, March the 20th, 2020, as we are in the midst of a global pandemic. Please be safe. Please be informed, but please, I beg of you, use this time for spiritual growth, for spiritual transformation. Let the trying of your faith produce something that is pure, something that will end with the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Please consider that. All right. You can email me at newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. Thank you for listening. Um, and I'll maybe back on the air in just a minute to do one more live broadcast. Who knows? I've, I've technically done like three, but only one has actually worked because who knows? I don't know what was happening today, but we will see. Hopefully I'll be back with another one. Thank you. God bless.